No, then it's not any fun. <laughs> no, that's it for sure. Right out of it, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, we are uh, live now on Zoom and Facebook. Um, okay. Welcome to one of our One Cape webinars. They are on Mondays, opposite council meetings, and help folks connect to the people and programs running in the background of our lives here in Cape Girardeau. Today, we're going to discuss quality of life, some of the people and programs and places that make Cape great. And our panelists include our Parks and Recreation Director, Julia Jones, and Mr. Cape Girardeau himself, Danny Esner. He is a former councilman, retired businessman, and serial volunteer and leader on various boards and event committees. Um, for those of you uh, watching or listening live, feel free to drop your comments in, in the Facebook chat, or those of you on Zoom can drop uh, comments in the chat. And um, uh, let me know if you want to hop on the webinar with us to ask any questions. Uh, Mr. Esther, the show is now yours. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're talking about one of my favorite topics today, which is quality of life. And, and that really describes Cape Girardeau. So to start, the Def Webster's definition of quality of life is the degree to which an individual is healthy, comfortable, and able to participate in or enjoy life events. In other words, what makes us happy. And so why is quality of life important besides just making us happy. Uh, from a community perspective, a good quality of life allows us to attract new businesses to our district, to our community. So when companies are looking for a, an opportunity to expand, looking for uh, new cities to uh, branch out into, one of the things in their checklist is always quality of life. And sometimes that can be a tiebreaker. The other thing that quality of life does for our community is it attracts people to our community, people to live here. So uh, you have families moving here from other places. As people move in, uh, they provide customers for our, our shops and our restaurants. They also provide uh, new employees for our businesses. And then I also, believe it or not, I think Cape is becoming a retirement community, a retirement destination. Uh, particularly for people who, who aren't necessarily interested in, in being someplace, you know, where it's sunny 12 months out of the year uh, because of all the really cool things that we have here. So, so what are all these cool things that, that makes the quality of life in Cape so outstanding? And the list is longer than you would think because a lot of these things we just take for granted. Uh, to begin with, we have a moderate climate with four distinct seasons something that's very important to me. I don't want to live someplace, you know, where it's, we don't have a winter or where it's warm and sunny all year long. We're close to St. Louis. So it's a short drive if you want to catch a Cardinal game or take your kids to the zoo. Uh, since we've expanded our services at the Cape Airport, you can now fly any place in the world from the airport in Cape, which I think <clears> is pretty cool. Our cost of living is relatively low. We have very low real estate taxes, something I learned when I was a real estate lender years ago. Cape's a very safe place to live. We have a low crime rate. We have an excellent school district, both public and parochial. I personally know at least two families who moved to Cape from other parts of the country because of our great school districts. Cape was also a very friendly community. We're welcoming, you know, even if you're not from here, you know, if you go out to eat or shop or walk around downtown, people are gonna greet you and make you feel welcome. We have awesome healthcare facilities for a small community with the two hospitals we have and soon we'll have the VA clinic, the Southeast New Mental Health Hospital. Uh, we've, we pretty much have almost everything that you would find in the metropolitan area from a healthcare standpoint. And it's all just a few minutes away, which is a big deal, particularly if you have an emergency. Uh, we have uh, an abundance of high quality fitness facilities. Another big component is the university. So let's say you're retired and you want to take some classes. That's, that's an option. But the university also provides a lot of entertainment, uh, both at the Show Me Center, you know, with, with traveling uh, groups at the River Campus. Uh, we've got collegiate sports, football, baseball, soccer, basketball. I'm a big basketball fan, so that's, that's part of my winter entertainment. And in the summer, we've got the Cape Catfish. You know, they're playing at their beautiful new facility, and I know a lot of people love to do that. Uh, and then dining is another one of my favorite things about Cape. Uh, for a small town, we have an amazing array of really, really good restaurants. Uh, I think our restaurants compared to what you would find in most metropolitan areas, we have 
pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, if you like to spend the sunny, warm sunny afternoons drinking wine and listening to music, I bet we have 30 wineries within an hour's drive of Cape. That's something you don't have every place. And then we have our downtown, which I, is something I'm especially passionate about. Uh, our downtown is it's not only beautiful, but it provides an opportunity to walk along the riverfront or just sit on a bench on the riverfront with some ice cream and watch the boats go by. Uh, we also have a lot of really cool events in downtown Caden. Uh, during the warm weather months, we've got tunes of twilight every month. We've, we've got the farmer's market. And then uh, we always have, you know, occasional special events. This summer, we've got the great race coming up, coming back again on June 22nd. Then we've got the uh, something called the Cross Country Chase, which is a vintage motorcycle event that's going to be happening on July 10th. We've also got lots of recreational opportunities. Uh, we've got a great selection of golf courses. Uh, we've got Dalhousie, which is one of the top golf courses in the state of Missouri. And last but not least, one of the biggest components of quality of flight and tape is our parks and recs department. We have an awesome array of parks and park amenities. And to elaborate on that, I'm going to pass the baton to Julia Jones, our director of parks and recs. So Julia, got the podium. Well, <laughs> thank you, Danny. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, Danny, I think you undersold all your downtown activities and everything else that you're involved with because a lot of these events that come to Cape and they're directly related to Danny's work and the work that um, Old Town Cape does to bring all these cool things uh, downtown. Um, I know one of the things I'm looking forward to is the Riverfront Market. Um, you know, one of my absolute favorite things. But to get on to parks and recreation activities, which is my passion, um, we uh, are blessed uh, with a, as Danny said, a beautiful park system, not even just a park system. Um, our city is absolutely gorgeous. Um, sitting right on the banks of the um, Mississippi River, it's historic. And so many of the things that you can enjoy in Cape um, really have their roots back to before even pioneering times. We have a really strong uh, Native American heritage. And in fact, most of our parks are named after uh, Native American tribes, which I found fascinating um, when I dug a little bit deeper into it. But in parks and recreation, we always say uh, fun is our business, but we take it very seriously. And so we have about 26 parks. Um, some of them are undeveloped, so I'm kind of hesitant about saying the exact number because some of them we really don't have any uh, features on. Uh, we have over 12 miles of trail, uh, six miles of uh, trail that has no motorized vehicle crossing, which is called the Cape LaCroix Trail. And people love that trail. It literally goes from the northern end of the city, from the nature center, um, all the way down to the southern part of the city, which is the Shawnee Park area. And so if you are a biker, a jogger, uh, anywhere in between, uh, you can really enjoy getting a good workout. And it, it's a beautiful trail as well. Three community centers we're really, really proud of. Um, the Arena Building, Osage Center, and the Shawnee Park Center. All three of those uh, facilities have a variety and host a variety of special events, programs, classes, and activities. And then our newest facility, which is a special use facility, the Cape Sportsplex, is the one I'm probably most recently proud of. Um, it was built with restaurant tax dollars and currently hosts over 34 weekends plus, it's probably, I think we're up to 40 uh, plus weekends a year of tournaments and events that bring direct economic impact into the city and probably parts around too. Uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, shopping, and we draw, we've drawn from all 50 states at one given time, but typically we draw from a seven state region. And even during COVID, we've been able to uh, maintain um, 
the right capacity and the right safety accommodations so that we can keep these events going. And boy, don't you imagine that our hoteliers and our restauranteurs appreciated that when everything else was uh, shut down. So we're very, very proud of that. One big thing that Danny helped uh, both of the uh, tax initiatives that we passed, the Parks, Recreation, and Stormwater Tax. This is a big reason why we have such amazing facilities. Um, Cape Splash, which we're getting ready to open up, is one of them. But back in, um, was it 2008, Danny? My goodness, where does the time go? Um, we, the city was able to uh, pass a bond issue, which helped improve a lot of our facilities and to be able to add new facilities. It was only a 10 year tax though. And then in 2018, we were able to pass a renewal of that tax um, with an 81% approval rating. And I don't know of too many initiatives that get that high of approval rating. So that is a true testament to the citizens belief that parks and recreation is not only important to the city of Cape Girardeau, um, but that it's integral to uh, the economy, to people's well-being, to people's quality of life, exactly what uh, Danny was talking about. So we're, some of those projects, which we're currently working on, include revamping parts of Kapaha Park. If you've been by there recently, you know we've got a lot of dirt moving going on, so it doesn't look like much now, uh, but I promise you um, we are working in the amphitheater area and up in the uh, Rose Garden area and what is typically known as Cherry Hill. So when it comes to quality of life, I think that you're going to see a major improvement on that side of the park, just very similarly to like what we've done over on the eastern side of the park. Another cool project that we are working on in the um, kind of like I guess you could say the south side of Cape is the partnerships that we have with the Cape Girardeau School District and we are helping renovate um, Jefferson Pool by uh, or Jefferson School by putting in a new indoor pool and so that pool will be able to be used utilized year round and so that project hopefully will be kicking off this summer and be completed sometime uh, next year. So pretty excited about that, along with adding a uh, new neighborhood park uh, to the school. So that area has been underserved for quite a long time. And so the Parks, Recreation and Stormwater Tax Renewal has helped us provide funds to improve that quality of life on that side of town. And that's kind of important to make sure that all aspects of your community uh, benefit from a great park system, great parks, be having a walkable uh, community. I think Cape Girardeau has made great strides in the last 20 years to uh, make sure that if you need to get on your bike or you need to walk somewhere, there's so many things that are convenient within a maybe a 10 minute walk. So one of my favorite things, I think like Danny said, is the riverfront. And we have over a mile's worth of trail right along the Mississippi River. In fact, you can get all the way from downtown Cape over to the boat ramp at Red Star. And in a few years, that area is also being redeveloped into a new neighborhood park, the Red Star Park. And so we're really excited because there's some big dreams going on about even putting in uh, boat ramps right adjacent to the Mississippi River or boat docks and potentially even having you know river boats and uh, dinner boat cruises. And I mean, how cool would that be for quality of life? Uh, so anyway, what have I missed? I'm sure there's so much to talk about in Cape. Maybe, Danny, you uh, can recall something that I've not touched on. You know, I think you've, uh, uh, you've covered most of it. Are we also planning on maybe having an RV park up by the Red Star area? Yes, yes. So that too, right near the casino would be an awesome place um, to be able to come and hang out whether it's boating, whether it's going to the casino or traveling you know, to the farmer's market in downtown Cape, all of that will be incredibly convenient. And I think some of the things I might've uh, glanced over are special events. I know you touched on those, Danny, but uh, from a parks and recreation standpoint, I don't know too many other departments in the state of Missouri or close by that put on as many events for all as many different ages you know, as we do. We try to cover the gamut from A to Z and zero to 100. Uh, but whether it's you know youth leagues, whether it's um, 4th of July special event, 
um, Christmas and holiday activities. Uh, I think we've got something uh, for everybody. I'm really glad you mentioned that because particularly for people with kids, you know, Parks and Rec is about a lot more than just parks. You know, you guys have so many activities that you organize, not just youth leagues, but you got something going on just about every week. I'm yes. always amazed, you know, if you get your Placate magazine, it's amazing how many things are in there. And most people don't even realize. It's you funny know, you well, should say that. I have one right here. We've got our convenient. summer issue getting ready to come out. <laughs> how convenient. Well, you know, a lot of the things we've talked about can't happen without the help of volunteers. You know, both uh, for Parks and Recs, and I know in particularly for Old Town Cape, Old Town Cape has a staff of four people, uh, but to make all the things happen that happen in downtown Cape, you know, we have to have help from volunteers. And so I would encourage anybody that's listening, if you're not already involved, you know, reach out to the Park Department, to Old Town Cape, to the Convention and Business Bureau, uh, to see how you might be able to help. But basically, it takes all of us working together uh, to make Cape an even better place to live, work, and play. I would also say that it's it's very gratifying. It's something I've been doing most of my life, and I, I just really enjoy getting involved, meeting other people that have similar interests to me. I mean, I mean it's just a big part of uh, my quality of life is getting involved and in, in helping to make things happen. Uh, so, Nicoletta, is this the part where we invite people to ask questions? Uh, yes, sir. And I'm, and I'm glad you, you, you landed on that um, volunteer concept. That could be, I think, a, a great webinar in and of itself, all the different churches and um, uh, just local social services and you know, Parks and Rec, everybody that's uh, reaching out to folks for volunteer opportunities. I'll call you right back. That's a fun way to get involved. So thank you for sharing that. Um, just a reminder to the folks, if you're on live with us on Zoom or Facebook, um, just drop your comments or questions in the chat. And if you are watching the recorded version, if you missed the live version, um, reach out to us anytime or just direct message us right on social media. And we'll try to get you connected to whatever people program or place that you're, you're interested in. Um, so this first question actually is for uh, Danny, um, Mr. Cape Girardeau. Uh, we get a lot of uh, questions from folks of, um, or hopes, if you will. I wish we had XYZ event, some kind of specific kind of music festival or, or arts or food festival or just whatever that person's into. They're like, hey, why don't we have this thing? What would be your advice to somebody who's wishing for some type of uh, new specific type of special event? You know, the first thing they probably need to do is, is reach out to people, maybe like myself or the Convention and Business Bureau, Old Town Cape, that have been involved in organizing existing events because we kind of have a template and we, we kind of know what's involved and what's required to make something like this happen. And uh, I should point out that, that number one, it takes strong leadership. You have to have somebody that's passionate about doing this and they have to be willing to get involved and stay involved and help make it happen. Uh, my experience has been, you know, if you, if you have somebody that's passionate enough about doing something, uh, you can find people to help out but they have to take the lead. It also takes a lot of money to make these things happen. Uh, I know even the, you know, the car events that we're having in, in downtown Cape uh, this summer, you know, we, we have to go out and raise several thousand dollars uh, to cover the expenses. Uh, but my experience has been our, particularly our local business community is, is very supportive of doing these kind of things. And uh, they've always been willing to step up with sponsorships. I know like our air show down at the airport is incredibly expensive, uh, but we've always been able to come up with the sponsorship dollars to make it happen. Um, so if you haven't done it before, uh, you know, we'd we'll be happy to teach you, you know, just, just give us a call. That's great. You mentioned the word template. Maybe that's something we need to, to work on as a little helpful event kit. I think we've uh, had a, an old version. Maybe we could update um, to help share, share the love, share the wisdom. Well, we'd be uh, happy to do that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Danny. And then, um, Julia, you mentioned everything from Kappa Hall to the riverfront, the upcoming RV park, uh, the pool and parks in South Cape. Is there anything else um, new or upcoming uh, with Parks and Rec that you wanted to mention? 
Oh my goodness. Um, we have just recently completed a renovation of Fort D. That's one of our historic sites. And that is one of the only Civil War sites that still has a min remaining Redan, um, which is an earthenwork um, protection for the fort. So for those history buffs out there, I'd encourage you to go visit uh, Fort D. Uh, we're working on the River Heritage Museum and that work should commence probably shortly. It's just getting a facelift. So another one of our historic sites. Um, one of the biggest things that we're getting ready to uh, launch is probably the request for proposal for a new youth ball field complex. And so that's been a little while in the making. That's a very big project, $4.5 million uh, project, which we will be announcing here shortly. And that ball field project is important because in order for us to do improvements here to Arena Park, we have to be able to relocate some of those ball fields uh, to a new ball field complex, which will be great because then the kids will have a super nice place to play ball where here it's almost like playing in a cow pasture sometimes. <laughs> so uh, we're looking forward to that. That's probably the biggest project that we have um, moving forward. Julia, I, I heard a rumor that you might be renovating the lagoon at Kappa Park. Any truth to that? Uh, well, there is a very big truth to that. We've kind of been waiting on some grant funding that we've been held up on. And so we're, we're hopefully uh, if we can move forward this summer on that, that would be great because all that work uh, on the pond, which won't be very attractive at all um, will happen this uh, fall and winter when hopefully most everybody's indoors and then we'll start uh, refilling that pond up and it's it's going to be quite the the change um, wider sidewalks uh, lighting a uh, more beautiful pond edge that will look more natural um, it, it's going to be pretty nice better fishing areas better water quality so we're excited about that we'd love to be able to move forward with that this fall. I know my family's excited because Kappa Hall Park is the jewel of Cape Girardeau, but it's also <laughs> our neighborhood park. So we're, we're pretty pumped about that. Awesome. Well, thank you to both of our uh, panelists for joining us today and our viewers. If you're watching the recorded version and you missed your chance to ask questions, just reach out to us any way that's convenient. Um, phone, email, social media, messenger pigeon, whatever you're into, just reach out and ask that question and we'll get you connected to the right folks. Um, stay tuned for our next One Cape webinar. It'll be on April 12th at 1 p.m. We're going to talk intergovernmental issues, how the layers of government, local, state, and federal work together and sometimes don't. So feel free to register for that and watch recorded versions of our series at cityofcape.org slash One Cape series. That's all we have for today. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye.